If you would please turn with me to page 184 in the hymnal, and let us begin our worship today in the name of the only true God, the triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you became the Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, and bitter sufferings and death, and your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful me. Now, upon the issue of confession, I, by the virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of God's word, I announce God's grace to you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You would please take out your inserts and we will together continue with the intro. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melodies to our God on life. He covers the heavens with clouds. His prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food. And to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse. Nor his pleasure is not the strength of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. In those who hope. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing.
be with each of you. And with my spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all of our need of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all that you give to us and all that we benefit from, and that we may serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading this morning is taken from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastures, declare the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who care for my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away. You have not attended to them. Behold, I will attend to you for your evil deeds, declares the Lord. Then I will gather the remnants of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will set shepherds over them who will care for them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall any be missing, declares the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his chase, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The epistle today is taken from Ephesians 2, verses 11 through 22. <laughs> Therefore, that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcised, but what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenant of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of the commandments expressed in the ordinance that he might create himself one new man in the place of two, so then making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility and he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For though him we both have access in one spirit to the Father, so that when then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also being built together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. This morning I'm going to use a different text, Romans 10, beginning with verse number 8. The word is near you, in your mouth and your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ Christ, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession, 
redemption is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is over all, and all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the text for this Sunday. Let's together confess our faith in the one true God, the triune God, through the words of the creed, the Nicene Creed, as we find it on the back flap of our hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten in this hour before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the early Trinity, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious power. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end and I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord and the Spirit of God who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. If you would please be seated, turn to hymn number 940. Holy God, we praise thy name.
God's grace and his peace be with each of you this day through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A couple of things. That is not a snuff box. That's my pills. And if you look closely, it's also a wafer holder for communion. Okay? So, I don't chew, even though some people think that I've got chew here. It's not, okay? It's my pills. I do not support homosexuality. Even though I have a stole of many colors. The reason I bring this up because I had a whole different sermon until I looked at a website this morning. I went up online to check out our YouTube site. And right near us is this Yahoo preacher. I won't mention his name because it really isn't worth mentioning. But this guy is God incarnate returned to judge Lutherans. He actually said that he really hasn't met a Lutheran who was saved. The only person that I know who can make that statement is who? Christ himself. So that's why I think Jesus Christ has returned because this guy has no problems condemning the church. And the sermon he's preaching is called Three Lutheran Churches. There's the ELCA, the LCMS, and the Free Lutheran Church. Um, there's a lot more Lutheran churches than that, like Baptist churches. There's Missionary Baptist, there's Southern Baptist, there's Reformed Baptist, there's this Baptist, that Baptist. And so there are many Lutheran bodies. His contention is because the ELCA supports homosexuality, has sodomites who are elders, lesbians who preach from the pulpit, that everybody that belongs to the ELCA is going to hell, as well as all other Lutherans. He contends that just because you belong to that organization, you are going to hell, unless you probably join his congregation. Uh, he very proudly professed to his congregation that he rebaptized a Lutheran by immersing them. Even though the word baptismo does not mean immersion alone. At the wedding feast in Cana, the jars were there filled with water for the ritualistic washing of the Jews of the pots the pans, the utensils, the cups, the tables. I'd like to see this guy grab one of them tables, take it down to the river, and immerse it. It ain't going to happen. That table's about 10 feet long, about a foot thick, and probably weigh 2,000 pounds because they were made of granite. But all Lutherans are going to hell is the way he comes along. And then he begins to talk about the Missouri Senate. Well, if you're going to talk about us, at least learn to pronounce our name. It's not Senad, it's Senate. And he basically says that he has not met a saved Lutheran who is a member of the Missouri Senate. Now, there may be some that he hasn't met. That's why I say he must be God. Because only God can look into the heart of man to know whether or not they believe or they don't believe. His statement is, is that 
the Lutherans in the Missouri Senate do not know what the gospel is. Well, I always thought the gospel was the witness to the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, crucified for our sins, resurrected for our justification. The gospel is the good news of our salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. If he doesn't get that, I don't know where he's coming from. The gospel is very simple. Man, by his own reason and strength, cannot believe on Jesus Christ. At least he has been called by the gospel, the good news, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, and sanctified and kept in the one true faith. And if he can, thinks he can do it without that, well, he has to be God. Because man can't do that. So let's look at it. First, man is a sinner. This guy is self-righteous. None of us do good, no, not one. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. In sin, my mother conceived me and gave me birth. And because I have a human father, I have the seed of Adam within me. Because we all come from Adam. And, Eve. and because of that, because of their transgression, because of Adam's sin, death has passed to all of us. We are all destined without Christ to go to hell, to suffer the second death. But because of the love of our Heavenly Father, Christ was given for us. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He ministered the kingdom of grace to the people. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and he rose the dead. And the greatest thing of all was he preached the gospel to the poor. He is the Messiah, the Savior of man. He is God's love gift to us. And all who believe, according to that text I read this morning, who believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, well, they're saved. It doesn't say that we have to be perfect. It doesn't say we have to belong to a perfect church. It says we have to believe. We have to believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh and died for us. We all know what Paul says to the Ephesians. For by grace you are saved through faith. It's not of works. And this guy seems to make salvation a work not of Jesus Christ but of us and because we are Lutherans and because we don't know the gospel I don't know where he got that from we're going to hell there is only one judge and that's Jesus Christ this God, you, me, none of us have been called by God to be judge of anybody. Now, we can judge. We can call the actions of people into question. We can judge. The word is crino. We can examine someone's 
attitudes and actions. We can point out sin to somebody in the hopes of presenting the gospel to them. But without acknowledgement of sin, one refuses to believe they even need a savior. But I guess this guy doesn't need a savior because by his actions he makes himself God. He's his own God. To me, it is he who doesn't understand the gospel. Christ demonstrated God's love for us. In while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And three days later, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning, he rose. The Father raised him up. And because of that, because of that gift of faith that God has instilled in us, we are saved. I'm not saved by the Lutheran Church. I'm not saved by some preacher who I've heard in the past. And you're not saved by me, but you're saved by the gospel. You're saved by the very presentation of the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. How many of you don't raise your hands, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord, that he died for you? How many of you believe what Scripture says? Is Scripture the inerrant word of God? Well, then we must believe what Scripture says. And in Ephesians chapter 1, it points out that there are those who are elect, and their names have been written in the book of life. And everyone who confesses that Christ came in the flesh and died for them are the elect. Their name is in the book of life. They have a place in heaven. Don't let anyone try to convince you that Lutherans aren't saved and that we don't know the gospel. My goodness, through our confirmation training, how could you not know the gospel? The problem with this individual is he doesn't ask the right questions. Either that or he doesn't understand the question. To begin with, what do you believe? <clears throat> do you believe that Jesus came in the flesh? Well, he was born of the Virgin Mary. We confess that in the creed this morning. Step one. Step two. Do you believe that Christ suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried? Everybody that believes that, raise your hand. I don't raise them both. That's step two. Step three. Do you believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead? Well, if you believe those three things, you're saved. Don't let anyone try to tell you you're not. And then his attitude towards the means of grace, God does have means of bringing the gospel to us. Well, it all basically comes down to this. It's all in here. And brother, this is the new King James. Uh oh, I'm going to hell because I'm not using the old King James. That's also one of his tenets. Our salvation is laid out on these pages. God in his love has given us this book. That's what the word Bible means, by the way. It means book. This is God's love letter to us. For 
God what? So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. Christ, it says in this book, in John, did not come into the world to condemn it, but that the world would be saved through him. And the only way to be condemned is to not believe that Christ died for you. It doesn't say I have to be a Lutheran, a Baptist, a Methodist. And I don't take joy in the error that I see around me in a very sin-sick world both in the church and outside the church. It's shameful what has happened within the church. But the same things that happened in the Lutheran church happened in the Baptist, the Methodist, the Presbyterian. No one is immune. Now, according to him, Lutheranism accepts sodomites and lesbians. No, we don't. Don't believe that. That is error. We don't accept homosexuals. I can't help what the ELCA does. But I know for a fact I can what the LCMS does, as well as you. And I do not believe that our laity or our clergy would put up with leadership that accepted an abomination before God. But be very careful, Mr. Pastor Steve that you don't condemn out of hand somebody who is living under the grace of God, celibate, even though they're homosexuals or lesbians. How many sins did Christ die for? All sin. <clears throat> Yet this guy quantifies sin in such a way that God in Christ did not die for all sin, but only for some sins. And not for all people, but only for some people. That's not what Scripture teaches. Christ died for everybody. And if someone who is sinning, I don't care what they are, who they are, where they are, if they believe in their heart that Christ died for them. What does scripture say? What does it say? Are they sinners? Yes. They are. Every one of us is a sinner, even this pastor that condemns the Lutheran church. There is grace. Now, if, according to the statistics about homosexuality in America, what is it, 1 in 12? Well, if he has more than 12 people in his congregation, he's got at least one homosexual. Because the numbers normally work out. He has to look at the fingers he's pointing. Because what? Three of them are pointing right back at him. And us. I pray he understands his error and asks for forgiveness. But even if he doesn't, grace is still there. Because grace is a free gift. It's not contingent on him making confession of his sin. 
Because then it would be what? It'd be works. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in heaven right now for us. Christ forgives us. Not just us Lutherans, but the other people too. They may not extend that courtesy to us, but we're not God. We'll extend it to them. How are you saved? By the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Whoops, I got my What assures your salvation? The shed blood of Jesus Christ. Where will you be when you die? Heaven or hell? Because of who? Because of Christ. Because of Jesus Christ. We know the gospel. We preach the gospel. We teach the gospel. We witness to the gospel. This young pastor needs to go out in the world and see the reality of his errors, just as we have seen the reality of ours, and confess his sin and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness, just as each of us has done. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Um, could we please have the uh, offering? This morning, our broadcast will be turned off. So God bless you who can't be with us today, who are watching from at home, and those of you who are visiting with us. May he strengthen and preserve you. Let's rise for prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you that we do know the gospel. At least that gospel that is laid down in your holy word. By it, bless us, strengthen us, and preserve us in the one true faith. That faith that believes that Jesus came in the flesh and died for us. That faith that we proclaim. Lord, in your mercy, for our shut-ins, for Jean, Jarrell, Laverne, bless them and keep them in your care, Lord. Strengthen and preserve them. Hear their prayer as they hold this congregation and others up before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Cotton, Earl, Evelyn, for Mike, for Bill, and now, Lord, for Bill Fussell, who has throat cancer and is undergoing treatment. We ask, Lord, that you would work with each of these who have cancer to strengthen and preserve them. Make a blessing, Lord, in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, for R.C., who is recovering from a second surgery, may this one be as successful as the first. Lord, in your mercy, for those who are recovering, for healing, for Morris, Irene, Jerry, Linda, Mike, 
and so many others in our families and in our congregation who you place your hand of healing upon and strengthen their bodies. Lord, in your mercy, for our, those of our family here at Grace who are in the military, for Austin, DeAndre, Marcus, for Clara, and Jonah. Lord, as they serve and protect us, Give your holy angels charge over them to protect them in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep Dot and I safe as we travel over the next month, as we drive 4,000 miles on the roads in this nation. Give us opportunity to serve you, to be your witnesses, to those that we meet and those who need your love. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of those for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and praying that prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 